Yes. No, it's not. Oh, we should also all mute our microphones when we're not actually speaking. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Hi, are we ready? Hi, and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and this is the third edition of the Techno Crime Fighter Forum. And with us today, as usual, is Karen Stewart, Dr. Uh, Catherine Horton, and Ramola D. And uh, we have a special program today because we're going to be announcing the global campaign. Uh, it's a tsunami email campaign to save humanity. And it's going to start on Sunday, April 2nd, and it's going to run for two months. And it's give the, can it's give the authorities an ultimatum to stop these crimes by June 1st. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit. Also today, we might be joined by Dr. Melissa Black. Uh, she's, she's not with us right now, but she'll be coming in. And when she comes in, uh, we'll have her introduce herself. So... Let's get, so oh, there was one announcement. Ben, do you tell them about it? Okay. One of, one of the comments from the last forum was from Rebecca Alberton, who set up a Facebook page called Techno Crime Fighters Worldwide. So is, isn't that wonderful? There's a new Facebook page set up. And her comment is you. Oh, because, made because you guys <laughs> rock. What a lovely lady. What a wonderful yeah. person. We really appreciate Thank that. You, Yes, they're grateful. That's wonderful. We didn't think of that. That's right. Thank you very much. So to get started, uh, Catherine, why don't you uh, get into a little bit about the, uh, uh, the campaign, the global campaign? Yes. Um, actually, before, before I do, I, I, um, because it's a pity that Millicent isn't here, but I nevertheless would like to start with that um, in her absence. So um, Millicent is part of the joint investigation team and um, she hopefully she will join us um, later. But one really big um, good news is that she, um, she had a, um, a fundraising campaign for I think, um, what was it, two and a half thousand dollars, I think if I remember correctly. And um, thanks to um, two donors who donated a thousand dollars each, she has now reached her target and she actually has the money to contact lawyers. So we are so grateful. And um, Millicent told me that um, she came home one day and then she checked her account. And when she saw that one person donated $1,000, she just burst out crying. She was so grateful. <laughs> so it's, it's just one of those moments when, you know, she's been um, abused so hard 24-7. And to actually know that there are people out there who care about you just means an awful lot. So um, I just would like to thank everybody who donates to, um, to our fighters and, and to this cause because it really means a lot. And it's, um, you are saving more than one life. And Millicent is, is one of our strongest researchers. So the material she has accumulated um, over years of research while being abused is, is just astounding. So she's really an expert on the technology and on how it all works. So um, thank you very, very much for that. Um, and um, also, I guess the other thing that we were all discussing before we actually started, before we even announced the global campaign, because it is a very big thing, I, I think we should emphasize again why it is needed. And as soon as we all connected, um, we started talking about how atrociously we are being mutilated, all of us. So, um, you know, Karen can explain she's outside and in a moment she can explain the actual protective devices um, behind her, which I think are the most advanced out of us all. I mean, she worked for the NSA, so she will have the most kick-ass protective devices. <laughs> so my shielding panels are nothing in comparison. But um, the situation is that now I'm filming from my own corridor. So I'm sitting in the landing because by now I can't sit in my own study anymore. 
they are shooting so hard that I can hear it bounce off the, the shielding panel. So I had to move to be just at least protected by the walls. And um, what is just astounding, and I want people to understand, um, all the listeners, what what a stage we have reached with the intelligence agencies now and these surveillance networks. I mean, we have reached a, an out of control, in your face criminality and, and gratuitous, nonsensical, psychopathic mutilation that not even the mafia engages in. You know, I, as far as I know, even organized crime, they bump people off if they want to, you know, set a sign. But not even they are so psychopathic to go out of their way to just mutilate people for fun in their own homes. So, you know, I just over and, and I keep discovering new levels of psychopathology. At the beginning of the week, they um, started that when I moved. Um, so every single time I do something to protect myself, they retaliate with a brutality that is just unbelievable. And I think everybody has the same experience. So, um, you know, if they shoot at your heart and you put some shielding in front of your heart, they'll shoot in your face or, you know, even harder or something, or shoot in your eye. That's my experience. And now having moved into the corridor, what they did is as I was just sitting at my desk, I just, you know, stretched my legs out and they um, kind of stretched so that I, I came within the beam line of this one psychopathic spy training house which has the satanic goat on top and you know a flat antenna on top of the goat but they essentially just crippled my ankle within an hour so they just kept shooting into it just mercilessly and at first sometimes they damage it such that you don't even notice and i think towards the end when they've done damage then they also you know damage it so hard that you feel the pain but i think they can also heat the joints before that so i was just sitting there normally typing away and when i got up to make myself a cup of tea i couldn't walk anymore uh, and and this is the this is the sort of psychopathic nonsense i mean apart from being shot in the heart every single time i just walk into the bathroom or have a shower from the um you know from the next door property, but also incredibly psychopathic and cruel things. For example, another thing I discovered is because they're using pulsed microwaves, if you shoot a microwave pulse into tissue or bone or any sort of matter, the heat gets deposited. And um, for example, when they shoot into my skull, um, I can just feel a, a brief flash from the impact and the pain from where the um, you know the shot went through, and then moments later I get a, a heat flash that I can feel on my skull coming from the inside. So what that means is that my brain got cooked in one place, and then as the heat just sizzles, eventually I don't have nerves inside. I feel it on my scalp, and that I feel nonstop. Um, but what they started doing now, because their goal is mutilation and mutilating women is that I discovered that my teeth started fracturing and how they did that is um, they would watch me and if I would just take a bottle to drink just before I'm drinking they would sharpshoot into one of my teeth and then deposit heat and you know the um, the especially teeth are very sensitive because it's, it's almost like porcelain so porcelain you can heat it all right but you can't suddenly cool it or it fractures um, so they would just shoot a pulse, a heating pulse into my teeth. The actual matter would um, heat up. And then as I'm lifting the bottle to drink, the cool water would immediately cool it down and then the teeth um, actually crack. So to actually think of something quite so psychopathic, and it doesn't just happen once, it just kept happening. And I kept thinking, oh, was I just shot in the face or was I shot in the mouth by these people again? And it's only when I saw the fracture on my teeth, I thought, hang on, where did it come from? Oh, I see. I see how the physics works. But um, the intelligence agencies have these degenerate people who are to spend their entire day just thinking about how to nonsensically, pointlessly demolish people. I mean, it, it's something to be taken in, you know. And, um, and with Karen earlier, we were just talking about um, when other people actually vit witness what ha what's happening to us, they realize just how idiotic and mad it is what they're doing to victims. So I, I go into such great detail, not to freak people out, but just to put it into context that when this happens to you, it's normal. 
when you're dealing with the intelligence agencies. As insane as it is, it's normal. So, um, yeah, this is um, so when people come forward with reports like that, don't be surprised because that's exactly what the intelligence agencies are doing. And Ramola and Karen, uh, I encourage them to also go into great detail of just, just the things that happened to them the last week, you know. And on this note, um, I, we started at the end of February to have a life sign monitor because um, after Ramola submitted the memorandum to Donald Trump, um, she was almost assassinated. And when I was traveling down to the German embassy, I was almost assassinated a couple of times. So we started the life sign monitor. And at the end of February, it went offline. And I, well, I, I, I should have tried harder, but there was just so much to do. But every single time I tried to um, actually write stuff on my WordPress, they would slow down the keyboard or the actual um, text would appear 20 seconds later. So try typing something where you have to wait half a minute for the text to appear. So every correction takes, again, half a minute. So just to write a paragraph takes like 20 minutes or something like that. So it was infuriating. And I had to find a, a workaround, which I now did. But um, you know, now I'm putting the life sign monitor back. And then people can, again, read day by day just the, the insanity we go through, you know, and just the sheer insanity. So. Um, when people hear this campaign that we're about to announce, they should understand that they they have to take part if they want to, because these are these are Nazi crimes. This is not even. I mean, this goes off the scale uh, of anything that the Geneva Conventions were designed for. I mean, we don't even have a situation of war. You know, this is just all-out Gestapo mutilation for nothing just for fun it's i don't think there's anything on the statute books that even does it justice and um you know when we announce this campaign i really want everybody to to help us because this is now urgent you know that we have we have crossed so many red lines already i mean for the intelligence agencies to mutilate their own population is sadly nothing new because we've heard about all the offenses of any intelligence agency, not just the CIA. But then to continue doing it when people send them a cease and desist, that's something else. And also um, to then continue doing it when people complain about it daily on YouTube and Twitter, when it's public, that's another red line that they have already crossed. It's, it's unbelievable. There are YouTube accounts of um, mostly women who just in detail tweet about everything that's happening to them. And they've done so for years. And these, these Nazis keep going. And they magically still have a job. I, you know, I mean, the fact that they are free and not in prison is a miracle. But the fact that they have an official job is an even bigger miracle. So if we now think um, in reverse, what this means is that our governments and our police and intelligence agencies are so deep in deep capture by psychopaths and criminals that they have saturated the entire judiciary, the police services, and the intelligence agencies in the, the, the high arc levels entirely. This is, and it happens, it has happened on a global scale. So this is unprecedented in the history of mankind to have this sort of level of criminality in all countries simultaneously. So not one country has solved this problem. So this is why we need the biggest campaign uh, humanity has ever had, because it's the most rampant criminality we've ever seen. It's bigger than, than Nazi Germany, because it's not just Germany, it's everywhere. And, and the, the victims who are on, the victims of the intelligence agencies number in the millions. So we are talking, you know, Holocaust scale here. And for this reason, we have now decided to launch a global campaign. It has to be global because no country on its own can stamp out this criminality. It is, I think it's physically impossible <clears throat> with the systems. And um, this is why the only way we can shut them down is to have a global um, campaign and to have do it simultaneously. So 
this campaign is, is actually much bigger than what we're announcing, but we're announcing now the first phase. And the first phase is called um, the, um, the Global Tsunami Email Campaign to Save Humanity. And in the first, the first um, phase will be an email campaign. And um, we will start on the 2nd of April. And within two months, we are going to contact in waves, we're going to contact every single um, state of the US and um, 156 countries. So these are all the countries in the world that have um, roughly a million inhabitants. So there are some islands and some smaller countries, and but they, if the other countries know, they will get to know as well. So, um, and what we will do is we will um, run this campaign and we'll have action days on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. So three days per week. These will be our action days. And um, the goal is to deliver an ultimatum to all the officials in these countries, all the officials who have a statutory duty to stop holocausts, genocide, um, organized crime, and this sort of criminality in the intelligence agencies and the military. Um, and what we will do is on every action day, we will contact two US states and six foreign countries. Um, simultaneously and um, we will assemble email lists and we will also assemble um, a template text um, that we'll deliver to them and what the text will be is a um, what it needs to be is a rough description of the crimes um, it, uh, an actual explanation that they are responsible to act it is their official responsibility to do something and then it is also delivering this ultimatum that they have to act from the point of receipt of this um, of this email. They have to act to shut these crimes down. Um, and the, the deadline will be the 1st of June 2017. And once these officials receive an actual public notification of the crimes and their requirement to act, they are publicly liable to act. If they fail to act, it will have legal consequences. And um, by the end of the campaign, which will be the 30th of May, there will not be any large country on, on planet Earth where the officials are not informed, where we don't know that they have been informed, and where they have any excuse left to continue with this madness. So that's that's the idea. And the way we are going to do it is we are going to start with the smallest countries and the smallest US states. So I think on the very first day, which will be this Sunday, I think we have Vermont and Wyoming in the US and then some very, very small countries. And they will be, they will be warned first and then we'll say, okay, this is what, what we're doing. And then on Tuesday, we will email another batch, again, two US states and six countries. And we are not emailing everybody at the same time on purpose, because as I said, we are now flipping a complex system on its back, which is like flip, flipping a car on its back. We all have to keep pushing and rocking and use the inertia and the swing of the system to push even harder. So if we just all do one push, nothing's gonna happen. Instead, we'll have three pushes per week and we'll continue for two months. And it will hopefully also more and more people will hear about this campaign and join in. For the people who join in, it will be extremely simple. You, you just have to remember to send one email um, three times per week. Can you, can you keep that up? Could you, the question to the people who want to participate is could you do that for humanity? Could you be bothered to send three emails per week for two months to save humanity? Yes, no. If the answer is yes and people can be bothered, then they really will help us a lot. Because the idea is that um, instead of doing what people did in the past, where people made, um, you know, they had victim organizations and the victim, the head of the victim organization would write to these officials and say, please stop. And they ignored this one person because to these officials, one little meaningless person knocked on their door and they said, no, shut the door. And that was that. So now we're turning it around. Instead of, if, instead of many people being contacted by, by the few, it will be the few being contacted by the many. And the idea is, and what I really want out of this is that 
these officials feel the total force of humanity. I want them to feel the size of their population. Because Germany, for example, the UK, they have you know, 50 to 60 to 80 million inhabitants. Now, if even just every fifth, so every 10 person emailed, then, you know, Monday morning you go in and you've got 4 million or 8 million emails in your inbox saying you stop this by the 1st of June or else. I think that makes a difference. That really makes a difference. Um, and as I said, that is just phase one. It is just to create the publicly accounted notification of this ultimatum. And then step two will be to hunt down every single official who, have, who hasn't acted. And we really mean hunt them down like they hunt us down. Not violently, because we are hunted down violently. No, no, administratively. But it will be much more um, um, terminal, I think. Because when our officials are this corrupt, then they have to lose their jobs. They have to lose their pension pots. And if we can use, for example, Britain has got the, um, oh, what's it called? The something benefiting from the Proceeds of Crime Act or something like that. So, you know, when you are committing crime in public office, I think we, we should check if we can't get all their benefits back. Because if it turns out that all they did in public office is run organized crime, for example, say because they were the head of an intelligence agency, then I think we should get those pension entitlements back, especially in the days of austerity. Um, so I think this would be something interesting for the lawyers to look into. How are we going to get claw the money back from them? Because these people have asset stripped um, their populations. And I think the least the population can do is asset strip them back. Um, so that's um, nothing violent, not at this stage, that's phase five. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But um, it's not gonna come to that because we're gonna stop this before. Um, but this is it. So um, as I said, Sunday will be the launch day. And um, also, also I should say that um, we want to set it up such that it cannot be infiltrated, it cannot be sabotaged, because we are now tackling head on every single intelligence agency in the world. And they are they are con artists and, and professional saboteurs. So we all do expect sabotage. And the only way not to be able to sabotage that is if with this announcement, everybody knows what we're doing and can do it themselves. So we still try to coordinate and offer people help, but um, the idea is that should we all be shot in the head or die from a sudden heart attack in our flat simultaneously, which you know on Sundays almost happens, then everybody else can carry it on without us. So what we're going to provide is um, before every action day, we will assemble to the best of our knowledge and ability some sort of email lists. Um, we have a little team of um, dedicated helpers who um, said they're going to help us um, accumulate emails of officials. Um, and certainly for the US states, we can do that. Um, with other countries, I really think that um, the, um, the people in those countries are in the best position to know who the responsible people are. So we can, in the first instance, contact the embassies that's already enough. They, they have a duty to pass on um, these messages um, to the heads of state. But of course, anybody um, is free to add emails. We also don't want to turn this into a corset. The, the email campaign does not mean that you can only email the people who we put onto an email list. No. What we want from people is to email everybody they can think of. Because if these people get one email, just one, they have a duty to act. So if you send the email, just make a backup copy so that later on in court, you can prove that, yes, you emailed this person, you notified them of the crimes. So if we miss out any officials, then please add them in and they only have to get one email from somebody. Um, so that's the idea. So we're not going to restrict the email list. We'll have a suggested list, but we encourage people to um, add others. We also encourage them to contact us and suggest um, other people to add in. What we would need um, if people suggest officials is um, their name, obviously, their email, but also their function, so that we know, um, you know what their duties are, what their function is within the system. 
And um, we are going to, um, we also want to uh, make lists of who the people are who have been contacted and, um, you know, with what text. So what we also ask people to, to do um, kindly is to, um, if they send an email, um, to include our email list in the, in the carbon copy. So um, I think the email that's set up is the, um, is it called the 2017.tsunami at gmail.com? Is that right, Karen? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's that's the email. It, all of this will be explained on, on the website, but um, just put us into CC because then uh, we can see how many people um, took part on an action day. We can also afterwards go back and, and prove that these officials were contacted. And it is about creating public liability for these people. And the next step is to find the, the people who have public culpability. Um, but um, all of them, so we'll have to act. And, um, and someone on the chat line, uh, are we going to have a template available for them to use? Yes. So, yes, there will be a template for the text, certainly. So, um, you know, the, the three of us um, will get together and by, sorry, it's not ready yet, but by Sunday, we'll have a template text. But again, it is a suggestion. So we are honored if people um, adopt that text, but there's no compulsion whatsoever. Um, so in, people can write it in their own language. People can um, write uh, something else that they think is better. It really doesn't matter. In fact, the more varied it is, um, the more the, the official who will then have an official um, you know, duty to actually take in this information will have to read the emails. If they just get the same email, you know, 50,000 times, they just highlight them all and just put them into one folder and read the first. The educational effect will not be as large as having to read through 10,000 emails um, with detailed information. So, you know, I, it's this, the idea is to, to have it entirely decentralized. So that it, because our fear was if we set up an email list ourselves, for example, the first thing they will do is sabotage it. You know, as things will break, people won't be able to come connect to it, or the forwarding won't work, or something. So instead, we'll have it decentralized, and um, and it's also very easy to know what we're doing because um, when I um, set up this campaign, I'm so on my website stop double um, seven. I should maybe I can I can even show you the, the screen. It's not. Um, hang on, if I get this to work, let's see. Um, it's not entirely finished yet, but so you know where the information will be. Um, okay, right. Now let's see if I can actually share my screen. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Right. So this is, can you guys see this? This is my website. Um, see it okay you can see it okay so um this is stop 7org and then here is a link to the um tsunami email campaign the very first one um but what that will link to is at the bottom of the page there's this uh field here called burning down the house okay and everything to do with the um tsunami email campaign will appear here at the moment, there's just a brief text saying that we will start on the 2nd of April and it will go until the end of um, June, and that's it. But what people will find on that page, so it's very, very easy to find. Um, hang on. Right. Am I? Yes. Okay, I'm back. So all the information will be there, the email lists, the sample text, um, everything, updates, um, any sort of video updates we make or podcasts related to it will all be linked there from that one, um, one place. And, you know, we might also link another website. This is something I just threw together in, in the last um, few minutes. Um, but um, so ev everything, everything will be there. But as I said, we want to do it such that um, people can, should something happen to me or to my website, people can carry it, on, carry it on without any of us. And it's very easy to know what's going to happen on every action day because it's set up such that um, there are 50 states in the US. So there are 25 campaign days. And um, you just go to Wikipedia, you type in US population by state, 
and then you, you list, you've got the state listing and you start at the bottom and it's always pairs, so two, um, two US states going up on each of these days, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and then you do exactly the same thing with all the global countries. So you go to Wikipedia and you say, you know, countries by population. And then you start at, I think the very first, I can't remember the first one. You start with country number 156, I think. Um, and then, you know, you go upwards. Um, so that's, um, that, that's how it's done. And this is how we're going to do it. And, um, you know, Doing it like that, the countries are scattered around the world because they're ordered by size, they're not ordered by continent. And that's exactly how we want it. So as the campaign progresses, anybody um, watching this on a map, it will be like um, as if you know countries light up here, here and there and everywhere. And on the very last day of the, the campaign, um, we'll be emailing um, the biggest countries in the world. So um, all of them, by the, by the end of it, all of them will know. And the message is that, number one, this targeting has to stop because these are death camp experiments. They're not even experiments. They're just, this is a death camp program. The idea is to step by step disintegrate human beings and demolish their life and destroy everything they have, their, their family, their social life, their, their you know, well-being, in the case of women, their, their looks, their beauty, you know, everything, just pointlessly, needlessly. And meanwhile, we've got another part of society, the, the totally degenerate mental part, that has a field day going around living out their utterly gormless degeneracy. So that's what we have now. And I think it's set up on purpose like that. I believe this is a, this is a planned um, takedown of the, the countries or the, the the richest countries in the world for probably acid stripping after that. I mean, this is how the First World War went, the Second World War went, and every other war we know about. Um, it starts with internal destabilization. And we are saying that this time around, we don't have time for this. I, I mean, apart from the fact that this is, you know, like, like Nazi Germany on steroids, there's another reason that even the psychopaths will have to admit, which is that our ecosystems are collapsing. We have real problems in the world. The economies are stalling because of the complex supply chains we have. We cannot just exterminate two thirds of the population as the elites or otherwise known as the cartel holders are planning in their psychopathology. That is just idiotic. It just doesn't work. What we have to do is we, we have to repair everything. And for that, we need the ingenuity of absolutely everybody. So we want to save humanity. We want to save every person. And we believe every person matters. Every person is important and we need them. So we need to save them. So that's the, that's the campaign. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. Uh, uh, Karen, Karen, did you want to add to that? I think you were involved in uh, well, this is uh, Catherine's brainchild. I am just absolutely thrilled to be part of it. And um, uh, I'm trying to coordinate several of the researchers to get the email addresses and things like that. And Ramola and Catherine are working on the meat of this. And uh, they're just brilliant. And I'm happy to be able to work with them. Great. Ramola, do you want to chime in on this? Um, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Hats off to Catherine and Karen, really, for coming up with this wonderful plan. And, and you know, I really think it's going to have far-reaching consequences because, as, as Catherine noted, one of the primary um, points that we're trying to make here is that um, this is public notification to officials all around the world. It's, um, you know, we're looking for action. But we're trying to, once again, because many of us have already written to public officials in our states, in our countries. You know, we've written to the ACLU, we've written to Amnesty International, we've begged for help, and nobody's responded. We've written to journalists, and nobody's responded. You know, of course, I'm talking about journalists and mainstream media. So there is, there is of course, a, a sort of an uptick in alternative media, in some alternative media, uh, to this huge issue that's really affecting millions and ultimately is really affecting everybody on the planet because we're talking about electromagnetic radiation weapons. Nobody knows if or when they're being targeted. 
you know, you just have to get sick. And if you keep getting sick, you may or may not know that you may actually be being targeted. So this is a worldwide issue currently. And so the intent, I think, to notify people is huge, to sort of re-notify them and sort of in a wave and sort of globally and together. You know, it's almost like we're holding hands across oceans because I'm imagining really activists from every continent participating in this and, um, you know, taking, taking the time, taking the energy and the commitment to send a note, just a brief note, as Catherine said, use part of our text as we'll have it. Or, and throw in your own experience, you know, your own experience, your own words are going to be so powerful, your own voice. So throw that into your email. And when we have these thousands of voices across continents, you know, sent into the inboxes of these officials, there's definitely going to be a shakeup. There's most definitely going to be a ripple effect. You know, it's just the, the fact that we are putting energy into it, we're putting intention into it, I think will inevitably create a ripple effect, you know, if, if nothing in the consciousness of the world, I would hope, you know, and, and Paul, I'm sure you can, you can address that too, right? Um, right? The idea that just people's intention can have an effect. So I really honestly believe that just, um, you know, listening to Rupert Sheldrake, the morphogenetic field and so forth, you know, the fact that um, when we do something with intention and we actually take action, we are um, sending a message through our common consciousness and, and that message can be very, very powerful and it can create its own train of consequences and reactions, you know, sort of like a, like a stone in a, in a pond. It has these incredible ripples that spread out and you don't know where that final ripple is going to go, you know, and which shore it's going to touch and uh, which person it's going to reach and how there may be nodes along the way. People, not every public official will probably respond, but maybe one in a hundred will. And maybe it's that one we need to wake up you know, and maybe he or she won't wake up unless he or she gets 500 emails one day, you know, and realizes, my goodness, this is hell on earth. What have we unleashed? You know, and most of us don't even know about it, but people are being tortured. People are being genocided in their homes, in their beds with microwave weaponry. And is this what we want to put our names to and call ourselves, you know, this is not human. Is this what we want to associate with? Should we not take action? So, so I think it's really powerful, this whole um, idea of sending joint emails in a global way, you know, in hope and with intention and putting our hope and intention out and hoping that it will have that, um, that reaction. And if it doesn't, it, as, as Catherine says, it's public notification. It's going to be all public. And so we'll have a step after that, right, Catherine? We're going to, um, people who don't respond are going to find that their names are going to show up somewhere as the people who did not respond to the cries of suffering humanity in the face of the 21st century Holocaust that's been unleashed on all of us globally. Oh, absolutely. I mean, their names are most certainly going to show up, and that's um, in, in court charges, quite simply, mm -hmm. because we are, the intention is to, to call on all officials who do have a statutory duty, and so far they managed to use the, their corrupt friends in the judiciary, the police, to cover up these crimes committed by only the intelligence agency and the military have the, the means and these stalker networks. And they got away with setting up genocide. So I, I totally agree with you. And um, I think you put it, you know, as always, you put it really elegantly and, and nicely, you know. I, I am much rougher by now. Maybe it's because I've been mutilated all day. But this is, this is literally, I, um, I think what I want them to be is, is absolutely scared. Absolutely scared because this is, this is the opening shot in a war. Mm -hmm. Or from now our side. We all received the message now that they have sent us. We all understood now that they want to genocide most of us. And now war has been declared. And this is our answer. And this answer, the more threatened. Hmm? Sorry? 
this is what they're staging is an asymmetric war against humanity. And what they want to do is they want to divide us up. So we're fighting one another. The liberals are fighting the conservatives. The Trumps are fighting the whoever, uh, the, the, the Clintons. The Muslims are fighting the Christians. And that's what they did in World War II, you see. They had the Germans fighting the English. They had the, I mean, it was, it was a mess. And it was all sponsored by the same global dark, deep state that's sponsoring this. What you've done is you've created the first shot from our side. We do have a side. We're humanity. We're humanity against the deep state or humanity against the oligarchs or humanity against, we have to know what side we're on. This is the first volley. And this is against pedophilia. This is against all the things that they stand for, all the Un inhumane things that they stand for. This is a major first step because this is a worldwide action. It's a concerted action and it's against, we have victims. We, we are victims of this. And we should, as humanity, be uniting against them, not uniting against one another, which is what they want. So I think this is a I mean, a brilliant first step, uh, because what we're doing is we're using their structures at first to deal with them. Uh, their accountability, every, every law enforcement agency in the world has the duty to uh, prosecute crimes against humanity. That's just part of their charter. And if they're not doing it, then they're not fulfilling their charter, then we, they should be dissolved. Um, so. Yeah, I, 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 agree. I completely agree. And um, that's why I think it's so important to um, do all this with the specific view of um, also taking them to court. And it was Catherine Austin Fitz's um, wonderful remark. She said at some point, actually, we should, we should sue the journalists. Yes, we should, because they've been willingly covering up crimes against humanity, willingly for years. They, they are thousands on actually hundreds of thousands of victims every person approaches the media with their stories how many thousand times were each of our major newspapers contacted and they turned victims who had a death sentence on them they turned them away it's like being being a news agency in germany in in you know just before the second world war during the second world war and people who escaped the death camps come into a news agency and you turn them away that's what the new york times did on or worse than that i think wasn't it the new york times article where a victim actually from a death camp went there and they were mocked they were mocked and ridiculed and painted as mad mm -hmm. well i'm sorry that was a mistake that was the, the big fat mistake because because them being the press they put it in print they even put it in print and you know that's been their strategy throughout to jeer and to mock and to ridicule thinking that this is how they're going to get away with it you know and you remember Udo Ulfkott, the German journalist who wrote those, who wrote a book and got on TV and publicly denounced the CIA for literally infiltrating every single Western news organization and media organization. He said, actually, we all lied for the CIA. He meant every journalist he knew, you know, whether it was on a newspaper or working for a broadcast operation everybody lied for the CIA and that is precisely how we have to understand what the New York Times has done or what the Washington Post has done because their favorite strategy is to name victims paranoid, unstable, mentally ill and insane and thereby attempt to totally dismiss and discredit the entire uh, reportage of these assaults which really means they are protecting the people who are engaging in these assaults. And I think in Nazi times that was called collaboration, correct, with the Nazis. And unfortunately, I think we are still dealing with the Nazis, right? I mean, if you, if you read about who's running these agencies, 
Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip. It goes right back to those Paperclip Nazis who were brought to the U.S. and were given fabulous positions deep inside these agencies and inside scientific organizations, you know, within the agencies. So, and it's their progeny or themselves who seem to be completely responsible for these insane programs, these insane experimentations and, and operations. I mean, at this point, um, it's an operation, you know. So it's an operation that opens the door to sort of selling the victims into, into non-consensual research projects run by these black ops agencies into which, you know, millions of dollars is being funneled through the, through the government and through the taxpayer. In other words, getting the hardworking American to pay, literally, for the mutilation and assault of thousands of other Americans, and possibly themselves, as well. Eventually and themselves. And eventually themselves, as well. Or their children, or their grandchildren, mm -hmm. for profit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Point, yeah. And it's actually, they, they are already, they are already being assaulted because we, last time, we didn't go into much detail, but last time we mentioned chemtrails and that is yeah. set up. It's already being sprayed. We're already eating this through our food. We're already breathing it in. That is set up to be a genocide mechanism. They, they already yeah. are. They just don't know it yet because the, the methods of the crime cartel are always to just have you already essentially as good as assassinated and then pull the plug at the end while while they're jeering in your face so we're already dying mm -hmm. and um that's what people have to understand they just don't know it yet they don't know it yeah, and, you have, and you know i wonder sometimes do journalists watch us for instance do journalists watch these shows do they go on youtube do they listen to the cries of the hundreds of people who are on YouTube reporting how they are being assaulted? Do they not care? Do they not have a heart? Do they not have a soul? Do they not see what is happening? Why can't they just report the truth, you know? And the thing is, they must be completely in the, in the pay of these agencies for them to be absolutely taking no stand. I, I would call out to every single journalist with even an iota of humanitarianism in their souls to get out of those organizations that are constricting them, that are preventing them from telling the truth. Get out of those organizations. Set up your own, you know, um, website. Set up your own uh, media organization. Use Patreon. Get some funding. You know, become a journalist with soul and become a journalist with, um, with humanity, really, and begin to report the truth instead of being the paid slave of an organization that has corrupted the core and is simply doing what the CIA tells them to do. You know, I, I would be even more radical than you, Ramola, as always. Sorry, I, <laughs> you are the, the relatively Go good. I'm, I'm the absolutely impatient bad mm -hmm. cop. My take on this, I, I, I totally agree. But as you were speaking, it suddenly occurred to me that actually, you know what? Um, we are still appealing to the journalists who are now have these cushy jobs and who, as we know from Udolf Kotter, get incredible presence wherever they go. Mm -hmm. And they also live off these presents in many cases. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, maybe we, as much as they couldn't be bothered to save a single victim, what if this time around we just sue them for covering up genocide and then we stop caring about them and we never buy those bloody papers ever again? And instead, what we do is we get rid of this batch who had several decades to actually prove themselves and they failed. And we say, by now, we, those people are not journalists anymore. They are CIA agents or other agents, MI6 agents. They are not journalists. So goodbye. And we should, for the first time in a very long time, have real journalists and say, if we have one of the old lot in the new batch, then they are agents still. We need a totally new set of journalists. And instead of, because I, I am guilty of exactly the same thing, I keep trying to save these people and, and make them good again. I think they're lost. They're too corrupt. We should just admit it, all of them. They're too corrupt. Forget the editors, forget the journalists, especially these prize winning people. As Udo of Kotter explained, the prizes are invented. You know, they give each other prizes. Forget all that. We need a totally new batch. And why are we hanging on to these, you know, couple of thousand people 
when there are millions of others, we should look to the bloggers, you know, to um, mm -hmm. teenagers or or pensioners who are looking around what happens in their community and are writing about it. They are the real journalists, I think. And we oh, that's absolutely true. Yeah, the citizen journalists, the people who've actually woken up and who are writing about it. No, there's no real journalism coming out of the New York Times and the Washington Post. As long as they are willing to write lies and, you know, report lies, you can't call them journalists, you know. You can call them handmaidens of the intelligence agencies. And as you said, CIA slaves, that's who they are. They're agents. Um, no, yeah. I'm afraid I don't have any respect for them either. It was just a thought. I mean, if there's any journalist out there who has, has a real soul, step out. And maybe this campaign, this, you know, this global campaign, will, will shake some people up, even in that world, you know, in the world of media, in the world of the mainstream media. You know, normally I don't give a minute's thought to the mainstream media. I have already you know, wiped them out of my consciousness. I don't read those papers. And by the way, Nobody else is doing so either. Those newspapers are going down. You know, from if I've, I've picked up very little bits of info, but I think I heard at one point that the New York Times, the building, was vacating like several floors in New York, the building where they are um, situated, and they're suffering losses because no one's buying the newspaper. And I don't know if anybody's going online. When I go online, I don't go to the New York Times for my news, you know or to CNN, or to any one of those places that we now know just put out fake news, right? I mean, so, to be honest, sorry, to be honest, when, when I go online, I go to your site, Ramola, so that's my point. <laughs> You're the New York Times. <laughs> your site is everything one ever wants to know. All the interviews with all the big names to do with targeting in the intelligence community, they're all on your site. I don't find a single in bit of information on New York Times. I'm sorry, Ramula, you have to admit by now, you're the New York Times. You know, that's, that's <laughs> great. I've become the new New York Times, right? Yeah, I mean, or maybe the real New York Times. Who knows? But actually, as you know, I'm a one-person operation. I'm not a multi-million dollar um, newspaper with, uh, with a building <laughs> and with several hundred journalists to write little bits and pieces on various aspects of reality. I kind of have to focus just on one story at a time, which sort of makes me slow. But you know, I am running an ongoing operation. It's an ongoing blog. Well, you have of valued information that is nowhere else. That's great. I can't hear you, Karen. Are you talking? Okay. No, what I said was you have a very valuable repertoire of information that cannot be found in total anywhere else. So I am always pointing people to to get educated. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I have to say, I, I also take my information from various sources. And, you know, I do think there is many websites online that have great compilations of information. But as we were talking about the other day, I guess there's, um, a, it's, it's scattered across websites. So, um, you know, I guess it's, um, it's a long procedure trying to get information and put it together in one place. I, I don't think I've gotten there yet, but I guess over time there's been a compilation. So there's some information there that I would hope is helpful. But, but you know, um, I think you also have to remember what the journalists do is that they take everything from Reuters and all these places and duplicate it. Oh, that's right? true. I mean, every single newspaper has the same, you know, the dozen or two dozen news bits that you can get on these, you know, ac accumulators. So they just put puff pieces around it. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but you actually do the genuine journalism. It's interesting because my mother had this theory. She said that they, my, my family stopped reading the papers a long time ago. And um, at some point, my mother um, was musing to herself and she said, I have the suspicion that no one is reading these papers anymore. And she said, she said that her suspicion is that the, um, because, you know, some family member interjected and said, yeah, but they have these circulation numbers. And she said, hang on a second, how do they measure the circulation numbers? They measure them by how many of these packs of newspapers they sell. So they sell them to kiosks, to the, you know, the, uh, what's it called, the kiosk at the airport, you know, all these places. And then they count them as soon as they, you know, delivered the newspapers. But most of these places have this agreement that 
if at the end of the day they don't sell the papers, I think the newspapers take them back. I'm not sure if they get money back or something, but there's some sort of a, you know recycling agreement. And my mother said, if they would be returning the entire pack of newspapers that day, they would still count that as circulation numbers because they were delivered. And I thought, that's, that must be exactly it. Because I don't know a single person who actually reads the papers. And even, even you know, at the, in academia at St. John's College at lunchtime, after lunch, um, we had a newspaper room and would go over there and chat or read the papers. And looking around, um, I mean, I started off religiously reading everything that was in the papers, trying to understand the world. And I noticed that barely anyone did. They would go in, have a look, and usually have a disgusted face, throw it in the corner, and then walk off, go back to teaching. And that's what people did. So I, I, I don't know a person who reads the papers anymore. I think it's just all a lie. I think it's fake news <laughs> that people are reading the papers. <laughs> and you know, yeah. it's not new. Uh, the, the New York Times have been lying for uh, 20 years that I know about. I mean, Judith Miller got us into the Iraq War through her lies in the New York Times. It's, it's happening, but the beauty is now, people are turning away and they're going to, to the internet. Now, I use uh, Activist Post. I think that's a pretty reliable source. Not always, but it's pretty good. 20th century... Uh, 21st century wire? Yeah, 21st century wire. Pennington, he's, he's really good. Uh, there are some YouTube channels that get their information from various places and they'll put it online. Mm -hmm. we, we have a blog too, pineconeutopia.wordpress.com mm -hmm. and we, put, we post every day because I know there are people like, uh, like our kids that don't have time to research anything. So mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're working and they're slaving so we put that stuff out. Uh, but I think this is, a, this is a big turning point. This is another part of the battle. We have to know that it's us and our journalism, mm -hmm. not their journalism. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And we put out our news and we put out our information and we function as a media organization ourselves. And that's sort of what I've been striving to do. But, you know, I was thinking as you were talking, Paul, you mentioned Activist Post, um, you know, and many others come to mind, 21st Century Wire, of course, Antimedia, Sleuth Journal, um, Newspot, which is that wonderful operation put together by Sibel Edmonds. Uh, she used to run Boiling Frogs Post. I guess she still runs it, and she's also got this. Um, and there's um, the Corbett Report, James Corbett, SGT Report. I forget the name of the journalist. I think his name is Sean, who runs it online. And then, you know, various video bloggers like, um, what's his name? Luke Radowski from wearechange.org. Luke and and uh, yeah. I like I like Dabu Seven. Dabu Seven, yes, I listen to him too. And I like him. Yeah. So these guys are doing sort of hardcore grassroots journalism on the ground. You know, I, I remember watching. Was it Luke Radowski? He actually went to one of those Davos meetings and tried to bust in, and you know, <laughs> and was giving a report from there. I guess he he got into the hotel before they had the meeting and then he he was kicked out kicked out but he did a report from there you know talking about what these so-called you know the self-proclaimed elite are doing out there you know concocting worse plans death plans for humanity no doubt etc but you know i was thinking of all these um alternative media i'm sure some of them are um open and aware to covering the issues that we are talking about but some of them kind of keep a distance. And, and I wonder why. And I wonder how they can be persuaded to wake up and start reporting on this. Why are they not doing it already? Yeah, that's a, know, good, question. That's, that's a good question. We covered the Hampstead cover-up two years ago. When uh -huh. You know the Hampstead cover-up? It's the story of a woman who, uh, whose husband was head of a satanic cult and was... Uh, um, uh, molesting children, killing babies. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very horrible story. And we covered that for a long time. And I tried as, I, as much as we could to get Corbett or anybody else to report on it, investigate, just look into it. Now, 
because of Pizzagate, now she's getting a little bit of attention and we're, we're trying to help her get a little bit more out. We, we published some videos on it, but uh, it's funny, they'll, they'll, they'll shy away from certain topics. You know, yeah. there are certain topics. Yeah. Uh, the 911 thing is, everybody knows it's an inside job. So that's, that's open and they can do that. But there, there are other topics that they, that they shy away from. And then, I, I, here's another thing I've noticed. It's a little off the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> I, is, Islamism is, is a problem, especially in Europe, because they, they have this mass migration thing. And, and I think it's, it's, a, it's an ideology that's a little bit, uh, it's anti-Western culture. It's a very difficult combination to, to sit with the culture. But most of the uh, terrorist events were staged by the CIA and Mossad. Yes. 9-11, mm -hmm. uh, the Boston bombing. And these have been debunked by citizen journalists. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, I can remember the one that was done in Munich. The Munich uh, car attack. The truck, yeah. Oh, no, it was the Nice car attack. And then later, there was a Munich attack, and the oh. guy that filmed them was the same guy. And he was married to a Mossad agent. So to me, wow. that's a false, false flag. So you can't say, well, these Muslims are attacking us, um, because, and then cite three things that were set up by the Mossad and the CIA. I think uh, as citizen journalists and journalists in, in general, I know, uh, Alex Jones does it all the time, but Alex Jones, we know that's that's fake media. Uh, but they really need to be more discriminating, but they need to cover what we need them to cover. They need to cover, I, uh, I know uh, James Corbett started a, an open source investigation on Pizzagate. Oh, okay. Never heard anything from him on that. Hmm. Maybe he's backing off from that. I, I don't know. They, hmm. they, I, I, I would like them to, to be like Rutkowski. Rutkowski will jump in on anything. If he's got it, if he smells something, he'll go after it. The same as Dabu Seven. If somebody gives him a lead. And those two guys, I, I keep thinking of them as boys because they're, they're young and vital. But they, they're also editorialists. Mm -hmm. If you listen to them sometimes, they'll talk about really what's going on in the world and about the elite and about how we need to unite, and about what's going on. So they're, they're above and beyond journalists to me. They're journalists, they're editorialists, and they're really what we need to, what we need to turn to, rather than the New York Times and all the fake news that it's working for the other side. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I think, as you say, there's many things they do cover, and you know, they're activists as well, and they're unafraid to speak their minds. So yes, it's almost like hearing an op-ed, right? As you say, they're editorialists. They, they offer their opinions and their analyses. And that's very helpful because people are looking for some kind of analyses, you know, moving forward. But to come back to that question of why are some issues more than others um, so sensitive that they are not covered, um, you know, I think that's a very, very interesting question. Um, and you're, you're right, the false flags, as you know, there's only so many media outfits that will cover the false flags. Um, but, but not everybody. Um, and, and this issue, this issue that we are dealing with, these reports of electromagnetic harassment and electromagnetic assault um, by official agencies and organizations that we are surrounded by, that is an issue nobody will touch. And it's made me wonder sometimes, are news outfits being gagged? Are they being told this is an issue of national security? You can never mention this. Targeted individuals must always be painted as insane or must be in ignored. I think you know, what is the story there? I, so one of the things I know about the UK for sure is that the, uh, the Ministry of Defense and the intelligence agencies have something called denotices and Private Eye talks openly about denotices that they can be served and then the journalists are not allowed to report about the topic and they're not allowed to report about the fact that they received a denotice. 
And given that we are talking about the biggest corruption in the intelligence agencies, yeah. that is, yeah. you know, actual active, um, I mean, it's on par with the pedophile case, um, you know, organizing yeah. pedophile rings and organizing the genocide of your own population, you know, the genocide of children and women, yeah. um, you know, or your, your men and women is on par. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the two topics where most likely they serve the D notice. And um, I, I can see that. I mean, it, very likely it's because of the D notice, which, why I was in the private eye office after my second, um, you know, hearing date, and they didn't allow me to talk to anybody, and they were glad, you know, so glad to be rid of me, um, because they didn't care. But I, I really say, I mean, Karen, Karen always says you cannot use classification to cover up crime, and that's mm -hmm. a U.S. law. I'm pretty sure the U the U.K. has or should have something like that. Otherwise, they just set themselves up for the fourth right, which they did. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think they that you know the D notices are served. But even if they are, even if they are, it's the journalist's task to check: are they being you know served a D notice by corrupt elements, and then to decide for the the sake of their own country, right? For the sake of their own security. Mm -hmm. their own government security and the population security, are they going to stick with a corrupt D-notice or are they going to report about the mm -hmm. systematic premeditated genocide of their population, mm -hmm. right? And when they come down on the side of a cor obviously corrupt D-notice, then I'm sorry, they're Nazi collaborators. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I would decide it. And then the other um, thought I had is that we also have to keep in mind that a lot of the things we call alternative media are also agents. Mm -hmm. So some of, some of them are agent whistleblowers, so Sibel Edmonds is. Mm -hmm. But you know, once you work for these agencies, you work for them for life in a sense. I mean they they have more tenter hooks, you know, on these mm -hmm. people than on the normal population. Yes, and I think Sibel Edmonds, in fact, she was gagged from speaking out about so many things that she had experienced when she worked for the FBI. I think she named herself the most gagged person or somebody else had called her the most gagged person in the history of the US or something like that. So it's entirely possible that she is actually, has been given something like a D notice, as you mentioned, um, Catherine, because I have wondered about Sibel. I mean, she's so, Upstanding, so outstanding. She's such a wonderful person. You just look at her, and she's a humanitarian activist through and through, and she's unafraid to speak out. But on this particular issue, she she hasn't touched this issue. You know, I think many of us have sent her information, but she and her outfit, Newsbun, hasn't touched it. And I think at this point in time, I think we need to reapproach people like Newsbun again. I think we need to tell them exactly what you just said, Catherine. That regardless of whatever gag order they may have been served with, whatever so-called notice from the NSA, that there are certain topics they shouldn't touch because it's national security and it's classified. They need to ask themselves, is this justified? Is this justifiable? And am I going to sit back and honor a corrupt and um, inhumane notice or order in the face of absolute genocide, in the face of absolute torture of humanity that is going on, that is being reported. Am I going to turn a blind eye and not report it? Or am I going to just, uh, am I going to, to, to make a stand? Am I going to stick my neck out and make a stand? And I think it's come to that time in life, you know, on planet Earth, among humanity, that everybody needs to ask themselves that question. Am I going to take a stand? You know, because of course it needs, it takes courage, you know, because you're going against the system. But I, 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 sorry, in one nutshell, it is a matter of national security that they do speak out. That's what it has become. It is, it is actually a question of national security that they speak out because we have death camps in our countries. So at mm -hmm. what point will they see the national security issue? Like, what does it take? Actual open shooting on the high street? Or at what point will they kick into action for national security? And by the way, the same question I would also address to all the heads of the intelligence agencies. You know, at what point will they actually deal with this national security issue? You know, throw exactly the same weapons back at them. And from our side, they're actually loaded. You know, mm -hmm. on their side, it's a dud. <laughs>
<laughs> I think we should. I think that's one thing we should do with these podcasts. I think here we are, a group of people talking about this issue, and uh, even if we're all crazy, they should cover. Here's a bunch of crazy. Here's a million crazy people in the world talking about being targeted. Isn't that even newsworthy? I mean, even, even if it's not going on, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's something. There's something going on in the world. Shouldn't somebody cover it? And mm -hmm. it's just. It's just insane that even our alternative media mm -hmm. not popping up and saying, "Hey, there's a there's a forum that goes on every week about these people, and mm -hmm. they talk about a million people. Seventy percent of them are. It's torturing women, actually. Mm -hmm. Seventy percent of them are women. Um, shouldn't." Didn't it get some coverage somewhere? I don't know. I don't know of any coverage. It's gotten anywhere. Mm -hmm. You? It just, it, just in some of the talk shows, you know, like Lance Coven's talk show, he interviews targeted individuals, and, and some other talk shows, small ones. And, you know, small, um, there are some groups that actually, you know, some people have actually reposted some of the articles I have published. Um, so I'm very um, hopeful when I, when I see that. But it's somewhat random, you know, they're not maintaining a focus. And I think what you talked about, Paul, about um, these alternative media should cover these issues, perhaps we should inform them. Perhaps we should create a small media email list, an old media email list, you know, uh, perhaps a, an email list of people that we uh, trust because that we listen to that we watch that we read and um, and send them information just send them the link to this podcast week to week you know because um because we're not sitting here wasting our time talking about a chimera something that doesn't exist there are thousands up to millions being hit with electromagnetic weapons around the world these weapons have been developed and exist both within non-lethal weapons arsenals, so-called electronic warfare weaponry of most industrialized nations, but also as covert op weapons being hidden under classified labels by the intelligence agencies. And as everybody knows at this point, our intelligence agencies, both in the United States and in Britain and in Europe well, and elsewhere, have connections with each other and have connections, sadly, with organized crime, right? With drug running businesses. Connections is putting it very nicely. They have connections. I would say they run organized crime, my view. My, you know. Absolutely. You're absolutely yes. right. Yes. They, run, they run child trafficking, they run human yes. slavery, they run, you run organ yeah. harvesting. Yeah. I mean, how convenient. Just, just call yourself a covered agency. Call yourself a secret agency. Everything's got to be classified and compartmentalized for the sake of secrecy and national security. And then run off and print money by yourself and, and run child trafficking and human trafficking ops, you know, around the world and run drug running ops. I mean, apparently the CIA has gotten like oodles of money just from drug running, right? Yeah. From, from South America and Central America for, for decades. And... Um, one of the things I wanted to do, actually, but uh, did I finish my thought over there? The, well, in any case, the fact is these, these intelligence agencies are completely associated, as we know, with crime. Mm -hmm. So sh shouldn't it be time already for any media organization, you know, whether it's alternative media or real media or mainstream media to act as real media and begin to report on these horrific scenarios you know so maybe we should start informing them is what i wanted to say i see millicent has joined us hi millicent hello hi millicent hi there how's everyone doing good we're doing better since you're here <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself tell us a little bit about you uh, for people who don't know you. Okay. I, I live in, in uh, Columbia, Tennessee, which is just south of Nashville. I have been uh, a high-tech torture victim since 2003. Uh, I have written everybody I could think of. I, I've gone through news with views. I've gone through Congress. 
I have written special interest groups, human rights groups. Uh, we visited with Juan Mendez. Uh oh. Who was the special repertoire in 2013? In 2011, I gave testimony at the President's Commission on Bioethical Issues. Uh, and at that point, they were investigating the United States involvement in the Guatemalan uh, syphilis experiment. Interesting about that experiment is that they had already ran that experiment in Tuskegee, Alabama. They gave that syphilis virus to, I understand, 90. Um, African American males, and then sent them out into the community to infect the women with syphilis. Once the uh, penicillin was discovered, they still did not give them treatment. They were watching them. I understand that the doctor that gave the last man the injection of the live syphilis virus said to the nurse, now they are of no more use to us until they are dead. I am now a, a non-consensual experimentee. I understand that the group I've been placed in is for cancer. So I have uh, visited multiple specialists for multiple areas of my body where Melinda Kidder found microchips. Uh, that Melissa, you're, you're cutting in and out. If you're driving, if you could find a place where we get good reception and pull over, it'd be good. Um. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, I'm not sure if she's, um, she's home yet, but um, Millicent's case is actually shocking. It's so shocking, not just for what has been done to her, but also how officials have treated her. It's, it's absolutely yeah. shocking because by now both Karen, retired NSA, and myself from Switzerland have called the chief of police several times. I called the assistant chief and the chief, and the way this guy talked to me was atrocious. So this guy, I, if he's got you know managed to get through school, then I'm you know good on him. But he didn't strike me like, you know, the wisest man on earth. And yet the way he talked to me was just astounding. And I just, you know, I wrote him a, a message again and I said, well, now it's time to stop the crimes against Millicent Black. It really is time. And we are, and this just shows the depths of corruption and the utter arrogance of the, of the chief of police who very soon will be named. You know, he's still under probation because, you know, I've emailed him and I said, now you've got another chance to act. But if this guy doesn't act, I personally want to, to, want to make sure that this guy loses his job. And in fact, I remember, um, Catherine, one of the things that he talked about was he said that she had not given him evidence. But this is not true because she has shown us the evidence that she has supplied him. And we have seen the x-rays. We have seen the letters from people who have... Uh, written on her behalf, um, pointing out doctors. the validity of her claims, including doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen so much evidence. So it's, um, we're not law enforcement. You know, we're not the FBI. But if we can look not at this yet. and say, not yet, we shall enforce the law <laughs> soon enough because we yeah. must. In fact, perhaps we need to, and that's the exact thing. The FBI is not doing its job here. In fact, the FBI is engaging in committing these crimes. You know, it's part of it, just that's as law enforcement is part of it. And that yeah, is the issue, really. That is really the issue. Yeah, that's why we formed the joint investigation team, because we had to become our own FBI. That's exactly right. And it was through forming that um, joint investigation team that we looked at um, Millicent's case, because she is... Right our researchers and at the same time also one of our cases and right it's insane i mean to actually see how the, the, the chief of police lied me in the face and i have that phone call recorded and i i will release it you know by the end of it people will hear what a liar this guy is but he i was included on dima this is how stupid this man is because millicent clearly clearly it cc'd me in on the on the daily reports or you know almost every second day she sends a report to the chief of police this was on his own request because this man recognized that millicent is at the mercy of a serial killer 
essentially. Yes, and you know, part of the, the issue here that we are facing is the nature of this technology. We are talking about technology that is being kept secret. And yet, we as investigators and as activists who have been working with hundreds of others for you know the past few years know that this technology absolutely exists and that it is being used illegally and criminally against civilians and, against people and it can you know? kill. and it does kill and that it can kill and it certainly can cause health damage on a dramatic scale and Millicent is one who has experienced ve quite a bit of that and has actually been very diligent about seeking out doctors over time. And she, therefore, as Karen, you pointed out, she has notes from doctors who themselves look at what she is reporting and what she is presenting and state openly that this is not normal, you know, that this is not natural. How is this not amazing evidence? Amazing. I mm -hmm. mean, almost nobody else, I mean, nobody else that I know of has such evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet she's being ignored too. It's, it's mind boggling. It truly is. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's more than a shame. It's an absolute scandal. Absolute scandal. Yes. And, and you know, perhaps, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm working on an article to present Millicent's story to the world. And it is a very complex and complicated article because there is so much information and it spans such a long period of time, over 14 years. But it's a very interesting story and I'm trying to pull all the pieces together and present a narrative that's coherent and kind of really shows everything that has been done to her Every, every way in which she has fought back, everybody she has gone to for help and advice and um, to report what's going on and the complete lack of response she's gotten. However, she has amassed a whole bit of information from whistleblowers and from doctors who acknowledge that this is being done to her. And then, you know, coming back to the issue of the technology that's being used on her, we are talking about microchip technology. We are talking about neurotechnology, and there are patterns for this technology that, I, that I'm pulling out and including in the article just to show that, yes, what Millicent is reporting is absolutely not delusional, is not imagined, is not a chimera. It is technology that exists and that hundreds of others also have been reporting as well, you know. So, that's the thing. That's one of the issues we're dealing with. We're dealing with neurotechnology that's being kept classified or not being acknowledged. Because when a patent is in the public domain, I would presume that that is not classified technology. Is that correct, Karen? That is absolutely correct. Once it's in public domain, they cannot claim classification whatsoever, period. Okay. So there are patents that we can find just on Google patents, you know, that um, from the 70s right up to, to the present time, that reveal all of the different methodologies by which states of consciousness can be altered, emotions can be altered, thoughts can be injected, and um, hypnosis can be conducted through radio waves, radio hypnosis. You know, Rick Eden, gift from the M from MK Ultra and the CIA, who had no qualms about torturing hundreds of people just for their deadly, dirty experiments, right? And discovered all sorts of methodologies of so-called signs to torment people with, and which they're using happily currently. Um, so, and and of course, other methodologies, ways in which microwave hearing, synthetic telepathy, putting voices in people's heads, and so forth. All of these, the patterns exist and the information exists. So, so the question is, it's us. It literally is us, not merely to, you know, act as the joint investigation team, but also act like the joint publications team to get the news out into the world, you know, definitively not merely exist, they are being used 
they are being used by absolute terrorists in our intelligence agencies and in our law enforcement. You know, they are being used by these people against the population. Yeah. I think this. Go ahead. What, what do you think about? I think we need a gate. Like pizza I, gate. I what thought of that too. Sorry. Yes, we do need a gate. I'm sorry, we cut into what someone is saying. Intel I just wanted to say very, very quickly that there's a good old boy network of affiliated businesses who are also using this um, in the name of profit sharing. You buy into it mm -hmm. and then they say, oh, you give us $10,000, we'll give you a return on your money. Well, that money is used to target, torture and kill someone and collect their benefits. Some of the people know, some of them do not. So, you know, this is a Pandora's box that has gotten wide open. Intelligence mm -hmm. community, um, private people, good old boys networks. It's just amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a, it's a, <laughs> you know, and, and I've said this before. I said it's turned the world into a predator prey um, society where people are not producing anymore. Mm -hmm. they, they've become parasites. Mm -hmm. And that's all they are. They're just parasites. And the unsuspecting people end up targeted because they're seen as cash cows and having no human worth whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a sociopath outlook. This is a sociopath world that we're heading toward. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I wanted to, at this point, exactly this, I wanted to, you remember we talked about um, reading out from Ronnie Kilder's book, Dr. Ronnie Kilder's book, that passage, um, Bright Light on Black, Black Shadows is the name of her book. And Dr. Ronnie Kilder was the chief medical officer of Finland and a wonderful um, activist and public speaker who revealed a great deal about these targeting programs globally and talked a great deal about electromagnetic weapons after having visited umpteen military conferences and you know talked to many generals and so forth and discovered the ins and outs from the inside um, about the horrors of this program. Well, she records this conversation in here with a friend of hers who had a nanny who was from USA, from the USA, um, who started to reveal completely of her own volition this whole story about how she was part of an organization which was a global organization which was connected with the intelligence agencies and was connected with Satanism and was an organization that was intended just to do what Karen was talking about which is assets trip people and take over people's properties and take over people's identities and steal their identities and so forth. And if you want, I'll read a little bit out of that conversation because um, it's very interesting. I think the whole conversation really needs to be scanned and put online. Um, so she starts with saying, um, you know, so the nanny's talking to, to the woman who employed her and says, you do not know who I am. And so Eve, the lady says, oh yes, you are AG, um, no names here. AG says, no, I'm a soldier. Yeah, right. I get more money than you do. How? Well, I get commission. Out of what? It depends on how valuable the items are or the information is. You know you'll be wiped out of everything you have. No one can touch what I have in Norway because I have no loans. Ha, huh, that's what you think. Your properties with inventory down to spoon are on the computer already with a different ownership. At this point, I was sure she wanted to make herself interesting by making up this bizarre conversation. You're, you're talking nonsense. No, you wait and see. After year 2000, they've gotten everybody. Who's they? The organization, the drug lords, the intelligence agencies, men turned drug lords, bribed, and now they control the majority of the world, but no one knows it. Nonsense, but what does it have to do with me? I'm nobody. You have assets and art. So, well, for us at the bottom level, it adds up. So then, you know, she starts spelling out the whole story about how this woman is going to be um, maligned and slandered and defamed and how she's going to be isolated. Pretty much the exact story that, you know, most targets talk about, right? And um, there are many, many things she says, but there were some of the things that she says um, that was so interesting. Um, so I'll read just a couple of those things. Norway is the target they already have under control. First, they take small communities until they have infiltrated all offices. 
then the capital is lost and then everything is too late. We have every corporation infiltrated, including security firms. You see, the trick is that we get in anywhere. Only Mossad has a lock no one gets into. It's the most brilliantly self-financed war. They can see everything that another person does. They can read their minds. They cannot hide anywhere. And the same will happen to you. They can steer you. Tiny transmitters are placed in your homes, in the walls. You will be implanted. The whole game is implant, microchip, and computer. They create chaos and sabotage everywhere and draw attention away from serious issues. After a planned bank, they organize all the down and out people, those in wheelchairs, lost jobs, old people's homes. After a planned bank crisis, people will flock into the organization, but basically they take prisoners, youth without homes and family ties, to training camps, where their IQ was tested and trained according to potential, trained in burglary and sabotage and microchipped for mind control, and then return them to Norway. Oh, and here's the thing that one of the things that struck me was um, they those who are not in the organization will be left out from the computer. They cannot even use money. Many will die. No one will understand. Think it is from natural courses. Causes. What do you mean? You, you mean they don't kill with guns? Guns, she laughed. We haven't used guns for 10 years. Um, and the date here is 1978. They use natural diseases. How can you kill with natural diseases? They have top medical staff, also dentists and scientists bribed with top psychiatrists and expertise in business and finance to take over the world with microchips and the computer. You know, she's literally talking about hitting people with dues as well. And, you know, she goes on to talk about who's involved. Um, she, she names all of the intelligence agencies and she says, um, the Red Brigade, the Barnovstrasse gang, and Hell's Angels, they all work closely with the very top. Everybody takes bribes and they're trained by the tops of the military from every country. Unknowingly, they get microchipped. With a the gas, they knock you out during sleep, a tiny cut in the back of the spine. They use everybody when needed to their purposes. The covert activities of humans to mass enslave humans are done with lies, misinformation, covert, grotesque human exploitation, and manipulation. On every hit list with all agencies. You see, they plan your life 20 years ahead. They destroy nations. They cover the law. They, are, they have a whole new law system ready to go into use after 2000. So I don't know if that went into use or if it's uh, still in, in the planning. They call it the silent war or two-person or person-to-person -person war. There will be an agent to every three people in Norway to do one in. Satanism is our strongest card because no one will take it seriously. The whole idea is to be as evil as possible because it is unthinkable to normal people. No one can digest it. We have meetings in the desert on the largest ranches in the U.S. and everybody thinks of the most evil thing one can do to another person. CIA is directly involved actually very heavily. So, you can imagine all this disclosure. This tells you that this is like a global organization that is sort of running like a worm through all of the intelligence in agencies of the world, you know and it's heavily shaped by Satanism. I think, you know, to, to people reading it the first time, and then a lot of people um, tried to or ignored Dr. Ronnie Kilder, but in actual fact, she was talking about the biggest global national security issue in the world, because mm -hmm. this is deep capture by psychopaths and criminals, that's what it is, and she describes it to the letter, and this is how they put it into practice, and you used a very good wor word, it's like a worm, and Catherine Olsen Fitz calls it the tapeworm economy, it is connected mm. to the banking cartel, and how that is sucking resources out of absolutely everything, so our problems are intimately tied to the banking cartel, to the printing money, the banking cartel owns the intelligence agencies because they're so easy to capture and to buy. And, and that's exactly it. And um, for those people who do not know, Dr. Ronnie Kilder was publicly executed in February mm -hmm. 2015 with directed energy weapons. She was in her 70s. Mm -hmm. So that's 
scale we're talking about, but at the same time, yeah, exactly. And but at the end of the day, these people felt so threatened that they felt they had to publicly execute a woman in her 70s, mm -hmm. and that just shows how what a bombshell it was, um, what she was talking about. And this is it. And um, but by saying that she made it very easy for the rest of humanity to have to shut down because this system tapers very heavily at the top. So there are very, very few people who need to be gotten rid of to stop this. And um, I think all nations have figured this out, that this is what we're doing. So I think Russia, China know for sure because they have been at the end of this tape, at the receiving end of this tapeworm for a very long time. They have been asset stripped in the second or in and after the Second World War, and it's um, carrying on from that. So I think, you know, we started off with the global email campaign, the tsunami email campaign, and it's um, this is essentially what we're trying to get rid of. It is this tapeworm and the infiltration through Satanism. I mean, I've got a satanic goat just outside my flat. That's so true. And yes, the intelligence agencies are involved, but now we know, we know in greatest detail what they're doing. Um, the Satanism explains the gratuitous mutilation, what we're talking about, you know, earlier of just shooting into eyes and mutilating women and children just for nothing, for pure fun. It is psychopaths living out their predilections. Um, but we don't have much time to stop this anymore because as, as it, this book very well um, put it, um, it's causing chaos to distract from the serious issues. And the mm -hmm. serious issues are those that we don't even discuss on the show. And the most serious issue is the collapsing ecosystems. That's it. That's what we're really talking about. And um, in killing everybody to have a food supply doesn't work because we cannot um, build spare parts for the machines who then you know, farm that um, without our full supply chain, complex supply chain. So the, the system doesn't work. Killing two thirds of the people doesn't work from a systems physics point of view. It doesn't, it will kill everybody. But they're too stupid to figure that out because the top is not at the top because they're geniuses. They're at the top because they're psychopaths and pedophiles. So gosh. That's it, it exactly. Yeah. But that's a great point. They are at the top, not because they're geniuses. These are not smart people we're dealing with. No, the world would look different people, if they were. Yeah, yeah. These are people who've kind of pushed each other up based on their corruptibility and based on how they can be compromised with things like pedophilia. Yeah, and and serial killing. So these the the, the top are pedophiles and serial killers. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the sad truth. That is the sad truth. And now yeah. the question is, when we have these insane people, and that's another thing they they keep calling the victims insane by this upside down reversal the victims aren't insane they are no they are insane yeah. yeah and i think insanity includes all the heads of the intelligence agencies they are all insane and we have to watch mm -hmm. out you know we we see them in interviews and so on and a lot of the intelligence agents um heads of the intelligence agencies can be seen now in newspaper articles in the olden days we didn't even know what they look like now we do now there are youtube videos with retired heads and current heads mm -hmm. and we have to ask ourselves when we see these videos in the back of our mind we have to keep thinking is that a man who was abused as a young boy so much that his mind has been split so that it can be controlled because i think in a lot of cases the answers are resounding yes and the persona we see during the interview is not going to be the split persona who makes decisions for the cartel. Mm -hmm. But and, and, and additionally, they use as their motto deception. You know, they lie. They lie freely. They get in front of Congress and they lie. They've been doing it for decades and they're still doing it. I mean, look at James Comey, right? Just last week. Yeah, exactly. And, and no one calls them out. And, and so far, all, all I have ever seen since I've been reading the papers with an adult mind is that when people do commit high treason and defraud entire countries and collapse entire countries, the worst thing that happens is that they lose their jobs. 
No, where are the life sentences for high treason? Where are the death sentences for high treason? We need them back because people had them for a reason. It's because with these psychopaths, you can't reason with them. Mm -hmm. You can't. You have to contain them. No one would think, oh, a serial killer who's killed 16 women should be just, you know, lose his job and then that's it. No, he needs to be locked up for life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our leaders need to be locked up for life. Yeah. And not only that, they also, you know, look at the CIA, Richard Helms in the 70s, when MKUltra started to come out, he ordered his subordinates to, to shred 20,000 pages of documentation on the deadly experiments, you know. And we have very little information, really, of, of MKUltra because most of it was shredded. And, and George Bush, if you look at the Schlunt affidavit, which I posted on my site a couple of weeks ago, um, George W. Bush also engaged in removing huge amounts of data and documentation, including films and videos from the CIA. He took them out and it just so happened that somebody got a hold of them and we got disclosure because somebody read those papers and started to publish information on them. And Charles Schlund is the person, you know, who wrote an affidavit. Um, he suffered all sorts of consequences for speaking out, of course. Um, but, he, but the information that he wrote in his affidavit is with us now for all time. We know what George Bush did because of those papers, the information in those papers, you know, and what the CIA has done. This is all sorts of disclosure about the drug running operations and about the CIA engaging in assassinations in Latin America and so forth, and as well as, you know, horrific operations inside domestically in the U.S. as well. So... But we continue to call them intelligence agencies. I know. What that's is that? That's the, I it's think, don't know how can possibly. Well, actually, Ramola had a wonderful word for them. She called them the <laughs> intelligence in, in, in agencies because they're mental. So the intelligence. Yes. Yeah, so I said, call them mental. Yeah. Not intel. You know. <laughs> the mental intelligence agencies. Yeah. Well, they're all satanically based, so we could call them. Yes. Yeah. Satanic and in fact, yes, they are satanic. And ultimately, you know, the guys running it, the guys uh, at the top, are these pedo sadists and satanists. Maybe that's what we should be calling them. You know, well, the pedo sadist agencies. So when you look at somebody like James Comey, how, how could you be the head of the FBI unless you're involved in pedo satanism? I mean, I'll say it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. Able to be, that's right. Able to be pulled around by, by blackmail and uh, John Brennan, James Clapper, right? All of them. You know, I mean, they. You can look at their faces and you can tell they're lying. And as a matter of fact, they've been caught out in several lies. Right. Right. And, uh, during the Senate CIA torture investigations and so forth, lots of lying there. So, I think also the, the key is that once one proves what the system is like in one country, it follows from the age of the system and from simple systems analysis that it's going to be the same everywhere. So as soon as we've established that for the US, we, we don't even have to stop there. We can say it's going to be the same in Switzerland, the same in Germany and the UK, in South Africa, Japan, Poland, everywhere. It's going to be the same. That because this system is ancient and it used pedophilia and then to you know let men and women kill others to mm -hmm. generate a control file. So we can now safely say, based on already the evidence that we have, that we have pedophiles and serial killers at the top of these organizations everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's and we're in the situation. It is, and it actually stretches beyond the intelligence agencies. You know, we're, we're also talking about people in the U.S. Marine Corps, people in the Navy, people in the Air Force, who are, who are using these weapons and running these operations and running these experiments, you know. And, of course, at this point, the universities are also involved. The universities are involved. Medical research institutions are involved. There is so much deception, so much covert action, so much clandestine action going on. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the so-called intelligence agencies are indeed at the heart of it because they're the ones who come along and put the seal of national security, classification, blah, 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 on everything. Close everything up, you know, so that we can torture in peace and in silence. Yeah. Far and from the madding crowd. 
Yeah, they they have to they have access to the military weapons and the stalking networks. They have access to the hackers. They do the hacking that we're suffering from all the time. Yes, they are at the core. So to actually fight back. It's so simple because you just have to put an administrative crosshair on the foreheads of the intelligence heads of the intelligence agencies. And I think this is what we have to do. So in this global email campaign, we are putting absolutely everybody on notice because we need everybody to fight back. But the ultimate actual target are the heads of the intelligence agencies. And starting from now, and not even from now, because we can go back in time, every person who has a heart attack or some weird organ failure, or some weird disease, or loses, you know, an eye, or a tooth, or a finger, or anything, will end up on the charge sheet. It's that simple. Very good. Yeah. Very I think good. we name. Yeah, I think we name it Nuremberg 2.0 documentation, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> It's, 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 yeah. I said the fake one is the, the um, tsunami email campaign. Oh, by the way, and the, we, you know, um, the, the, the name tsunami came from Karen Stewart, and I think it's a brilliant name because, <laughs> it, you know, it, it has many more meanings because we are doing this under extreme urgency. That's why it's the 1st of June deadline because the real issues we should be talking about are not even these artificial problems created by the degenerates and the intelligence agencies. The real problems are the dying, collapsing ecosystems. And the Pacific dying as a result of Fukushima is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the ecosystems in Japan and around Japan. And those are the real issues. And, and the tsunami email campaign is to give all these officials notice that we know we know also from Karen Hudas that Fukushima wasn't what it was said to be. And the best assessment I found is was that nuclear devices have been set off on purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard confirmed over and over again. Mm -hmm. And we know that this was again another false flag. It was again another act of war against humanity and we sh it shall not be forgotten. So every time people get an email from the tsunami email campaign, to save humanity, it's also with a nod to the people of Japan, because what happened to them concerns us all. Because this is about our ecosystems, our it is about life on this planet, and it shall not be destroyed by these degenerates if we can help it. Mm -mm. So yes, the tsunami email campaign is phase one, and phase two will be the Nuremberg trials 2.0. Yes, and you know, as we talked about, what is to stop us from assembling a war crimes tribunal for, Nothing. to justice, you know? Nothing. Nothing. We're, not. we're perfectly poised for it. Also, while you were talking, I think, I think we need a gate. Uh, yes, I wanted to come back to that. Yes, we we'd previously tossed around a couple ideas too, right? Well, Thank you me, again. Do you have an idea? Let me finish my thought and you guys can jump in. I think we should send whatever the gate is with an article maybe from Ramola to Titus Frost, SGG report, Activist Post. I have a friend who's friend with Mike who runs Activist Post, so we might be able to get something put on there. But let's let's make it a gate. Let's make uh, it's something like Pizza Gate, Pedo Gate. It's it's a gate. I mean they, they people should be on this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is horrible. It's happening to millions of people. And everybody's actually in the program. I, I posted something last week about <clears throat> the effect of barium in the chemtrails. Mm -hmm. Barium, supposedly, and Karen, you'll know this. Uh, yeah, Catherine, you might know this too. Barium breaks down the blood uh, brain barrier. So things that, are, that you breathe in can go right into your brain. And supposedly, in addition to that, there's nanoparticles that, that are so small they call it dust that you breathe in and it goes into your brain mm -hmm. and that can be activated by um, uh, the, the towers. Mm -hmm. Yes, so neural all, dust. Yeah, mm -hmm. smart dust. Yes, yeah, so basically there's a little transponder inside that dust. There is a little nano transponder, an RF receiver and transmitter. Right, and I'm not sure whether it's uh, technological or biological, I think it might be a combination of both. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So when it goes in, it becomes you. So we're all in the program, and it's 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 the major gate we all should be uh, talking about. You know, that's absolutely very true. I think maybe that's something to research a little bit further and to find out more about, because that is a way in which we can connect with the rest of humanity and just say, look, you're, I'm not the only one breathing this air. You know, if I'm being aerosoled and chemtrail dumped on, so are you. And this stuff is everywhere. These nanobots are everywhere. They're in, our, in all of our bodies. And I think somewhere, I think Deborah Tavares had done a show once where she was saying that everybody's skin, under everybody's skin, are these fibers now. That's from the chemtrails, you know? So maybe yeah. that's what we need to do a little bit of research upon, because that's a connector. That's a connector. It, it, so targeting is not confined to, you know, the 1% of humanity or whatever who's being stringently targeted. But... It, it really covers everybody. It covers everybody on the planet who's getting, who's being hit with these aerosols. We're all being neuro-linked to satellites. We're all being um, forced to live in this electromagnetic soup. And our, if our insides, if we're all being cyborged in this fashion, you know, we're all becoming extremely susceptible to the electromagnetic uh, frequencies that are being pumped at us from cell towers, from satellites, and so forth. So... So, so it is I connected. Yeah, and I, and I think that this uh, beautiful little group we have, starting things, starting the action against this, is, is a perfect, small, but powerful way to get this whole thing, get this ball rolling. Because it's us against them. I mean, it's us against the Satanist uh, deep, dark state, I call it. Um, so I think, I think with that, we really need to kind of wind things up uh, final statements, everybody. Uh, we need a gate, but uh, we got a lot of time to think about it. Yes. Uh, final yeah. statements by everybody, and then we'll kind of sign off. And we'll see if we can get our, our, our ending to play the way it should. <laughs> okay. Let me start with Karen. Karen. Um. <laughs> Well, I, uh, like I said, I, I think this is wonderful because people have been wallowing in uh, helplessness and being overwhelmed. And I think that uh, this is a great thrust and people will get more uh, ideas and piggyback or do their own separate uh, efforts. And God knows which one is actually going to succeed, but this is a fabulous tsunami to get your surfboard into and go with. So that, I'd like to, to say that, and I hope everybody is inspired to actually do something instead of sitting there being depressed. Do something. Right now, and Thank we you. have something to do now. Yes. Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Okay. Yes. Catherine. Yes, so I actually, before, before I get, you know, finish, I, I just would like Karen to actually show her safety mechanisms behind yes. her protection because... You all have to understand, uh, my head was cooked because I, I have to cower in a bunker every day, every night. This is how bad it is. I've got these shielding panels, and I was in great pain because I took them down from before me, here in front of me, so that people can see my face, otherwise it's too dark. But I have to put them back up, and my head was grilled by the Nazi neighbors with a satanistic goat. Um, whilst we were talking, that's the reality. But I want everybody, please, Karen, explain the protective mechanisms because that is weapons grade. She has to put weapons grade shielding there. And that's what it looks like when you have to do it professionally. And just take it in what we're talking about. Please, Karen, show them. Okay. All right. Well, behind me, I am actually out on my back deck and what I was doing with these plastic shelving uh, units that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, um, I had a, uh, a sliding glass door here and the emanations were coming through and absolutely cooking us and especially cooking the poor dogs. So I said, well, what's going to slow this down? So I ended up having a concoction of getting the shelving, uh, having uh, Reflectix, which is what uh, Ramola uh, Reflectix mm -hmm. and um, actually have the mirror and um, on the back, I don't know if you can see, but the back of the mirror has been painted with grill paint. 
So anything that is not reflected, and here's an extra mirror, but anything that's not reflected, it hits the grill paint and, and is uh, mitigated or stopped. So again, it's going through water, it's hitting uh, a mirror, and then in back of the mirror is grill paint, and in back of the grill paint is Reflectix. So it's multiple layers, and the only thing I need to add now, I think, has to do with sound. So I'm investigating what to, mit what to use to mitigate sound. That is amazing. So yeah. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Yeah. Well, and I, someday I hope to get a different decorator. <laughs> <laughs> But this is this is what we have to do. That's what we're talking yeah. about, people. You 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 can't have a balcony door with glass anymore to let sunshine in because your neighbors are Nazis and the police condones your murder. I have mm -hmm. to put her down every single night and I can't I can't use that entire side of my home, my living room and my dining room I cannot use and I'm shot in the head repeatedly in the kitchen because my neighbors are Nazis paid for by the intelligence agencies. So this is why we're launching the global campaign. And I have been in this, I've been actively mutilated for over a year now, but it's only a year. Millicent has been actively mutilated in pre premeditated attacks in a shift service 24 seven, that's three shifts for what, 14 years, over 14 years. That is longer than the death camps were operational. Mm -hmm. So this is what we all have become. This is what the intelligence agencies and the so-called law enforcement has become. And they have not been enforcing the laws, so now it's time we enforce it. But this is why we're launching this Sunday, this campaign. And I hope that people take part and I hope that people around the world stand up with us against these degenerates and these Nazis once and for all. Thank well, you. I'm, I'm inspired, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramola, do you want to end us up here? Um, sure. I just wanted to, you know, maybe continue what Catherine was saying and say, yes, there are people, in fact, in these programs who've been in there for decades. You know, Millicent, I think, suffered for 14 to, to 20 years almost. But beyond that, there are people who've suffered for 25 years, 30 years. People from their childhood, you know, being attacked with neuro weapons and being attacked with DUs, directed energy weapons. So it's absolutely unconscionable, the state of humanity today. It has to do with the time period that we are living in and the fact that technology has come to this point, which has permitted people to use these technologies for extremely pernicious, nefarious means and, and ends. And, and we as um, humanity with conscience need to stand up en masse and say, no, this is not who we are. This is not what we want to become. We do not want to become a society that simply preys on each other. And, and to say that, you know, definitively and with power and with strength and commitment, um, I would ask everybody watching this, jump in, join us, send these emails out, you know, talk to your friends, get people to join in with you. This is a simple human rights action to save humanity. Well, thank you very much and thank you all uh, for this this couple hours of discussion. I can go back through these things and weed out, take 15 minute segments and they're very relevant. Um, I hope people, we got a lot more viewers live this week than we ever had before. We incrementally, they're increasing as they, as they go the here. From all over the world. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Here we go. Thank <laughs> you.